Hello everyone and welcome to Soul System Colonization. Sort of. Uh, this is my attempt to see whether I can import the Soul System Colonization save into 1.1.2. Obviously it was in 1.0.5 before. And I know that for YouTubers, I have not been keeping up with the Soul System Colonization edits. They are six to eight hour live streams and it's really difficult to edit them down to 20 minutes. And also at the same time, I've been trying to see whether I can get it working in 1.1 because it is really hard and really laggy to conduct the missions in 1.0.5. And of course, 1.1.2 has a lot of optimizations that we could definitely make use of. So here's the question. I've got all the parts in. I'm confident that we shouldn't get any significant pop-ups saying that we're missing certain parts. Uh, but... Which craft are going to be buggy? Note that I'm not expecting that all the craft are going to work. The question is, uh, can we deal with the bugginess? Uh, can we get rid of those craft and replace them? Or is there certain craft that are absolutely essential to our operations and I really can't move into 1.1.2? Chances are I'm going to leave this up to the audience on Sunday to decide, but I'm going to present it here. And this will also serve as a way for me to introduce what changes we've made since my previous Soul System colonization video. Basically we've been launching lo uh, Mars missions and they're underway but we may have to relaunch those Mars missions or at least some of those lo uh, Mars missions uh, in 1.1.2 and uh, we'll take a look at that. So you can see 51 flights in progress and obviously the reason that I would want to import this save into 1.1.2 instead of starting over is because it's sort of a work of art. It's really, really complicated. Uh, this is not a simple save, and it would take a long time for us to catch up to where we are right now in this save. Uh, of course, if it turns out that too many craft are buggy, then we might as well start fresh, but let's take a look at the situation. So I'm going to go through all the craft that have been launched and check out what's going on with them. So we've got the new remote tech dialogue. I'm just going to uh, leave it enabled. Um, except I wanted signal delay not enabled. That's the standard for how how I've been doing things because during live streaming you really can't deal with signal delay very well. Okay, I know that this piece of debris is not going to be loaded because that particular cluster of engines does not occur in SSTU anymore. I expect that the main mod that's going to cause problems is SSTU. But anyway, this was just debris, so that's fine. Okay, let's go through all of our craft to see how they are. And also, I'm interested to see whether the game crashes. We're going to be going through so many craft, uh, jumping from one to the other. Is that going to cause a crash? How stable is this? And we are currently at 6.6 .6 gigabytes of RAM, uh, close to 6.7 now. I'm still working on the clouds. You can see them blinking in and out, and so... Um, yeah, I'm still working on that in 1.1.2. Uh, haven't got a great solution, but here you can see our communication web uh, extending pretty far out. Um, we've got all these extant missions. Uh, le uh, actually, let's just take a look at them. You can see that's our Pluto probe going all the way out to Pluto. This one is our Uranus probe. We've got uh, Titan Lander, and this is also a Saturn mission. And then in front here, this is a failed Pluto probe. This here is a failed Mars mission. This is a Jupiter probe, Jupiter probe, Europa probe specifically. We'll want to make sure that's all right. Okay, and then zooming in, that is a Mars mission that didn't make orbit. And then we've got our Mars missions underway here as well. We have a Mars mission in orbit. Uh, so that's a Mars mission. That's a station. And then this is a cycler headed out to Mars. This is the Mars Ascent Vehicle and Burroughs Rover. But first, let's check on our station. That's sort of basic, and there are Kerbals on board. Okay, well, here we are. And we have Kerbal Alarm Clock. All of our alarms seem to be just fine. So that's nice. Um, alarm clock, can we turn, go away, nope, go away, um, looks like, uh, we have all our stuff updated here, TacLife support, SkyNest, 
has zero crew. Oh, we don't have any crew aboard. Well, that, that explains it. Yeah, we moved the crew back down uh, so that we could conduct the Mars missions. So no crew aboard, but it seems to be intact. It's certainly not exploding. That's a, that's a good start. Uh, taking a look at our food situation elsewhere. Uh, looks like return vehicle. Everything seems to have enough food. And of course our Mars missions have a lot of food and water and oxygen. Yep. Uh, the station has four years for one crew, but uh, for the total of four crew members that we're sending over, that's not... That's not a whole lot. Oh, that's about a year, more than a year worth of food. Uh, we can't jump to Endymion Station from here. Let's focus on our stations first and then see what else we can do. But anyway, this one, if we, let's see what happens if we time warp to daylight. That's a good test. Is it still stable when we come out of uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement and all that? Yeah, it looks fine. It looks fine to me. Alright, let's uh, check up on our station around the moon. So I'm going to go to the map. I'm going to go direct instead of going through the tracking station. Though we'll uh, use the tracking station sometimes. Let us let me get rid of the lines here. Um, actually, let me check up on the return vehicle. There is a Kerbal in there. So we need to prioritize the stuff with Kerbals in to see whether they're alright. Okay, here is Griffin 9971. And this is a uh, Mars return vehicle that isn't actually going to Mars. Uh, we would need to attach some sort of transfer stage to it. But it's got the uh, near future solar panels. Otherwise, it seems to be all right. How's it's. Oh, uh, the food, water, and oxygen is updating right now. Um, does, is this changing at all? No, this isn't changing at all. He's got 117 days worth of oxygen left, and that's the limiting factor. Otherwise, seems to be in good order. Does the docking port work? I mean, you know, you never know. Docking port seems to be fine. Okay, and this is all realism overhaul, by the way. Let me just remind you. Uh, realism overhaul configurations are active. Um, pitch and yaw are a bit twitchy. Um, that's because there's no RCS working, and so Smart ASS had literally nothing to work with in order to turn the vehicle to prograde. And, uh, yeah, there's no reaction wheel or anything. Okay, so Griffin looks fine. Now let's check up on Endymion Station, which has three Kerbals, including myself. So that's sort of important. Okay, uh, it's still loading. There I am. There's Adel42 and Peaceful Herbs. All right, everything looking good. Now, uh, if you recall, this we had a problem with this uh, resource transfer vehicle. And this portion decided to resize itself instead of being the proper size. Uh, that seems to still be consistent. That is not incorrect. And the station itself looks to be in good order. That's the lunar lander. That is another supply module with docking facilities. And this is the main, main crew module. And uh, resources are updating right now. I'll probably wait until they're done. Uh, it, it shows a negative number for food and water here, which is incorrect. But that's uh, it looks like that's because TAC Life Support is updating right now. So I'm going to let it uh, finish updating. And then we will see what the situation with the supplies are. But uh, at least they're still alive. So taking a look at what other Kerbal vehicles we need to look at. So the priority goes stuff with Kerbals in. And so far, so good. And then probes to other planets. And then our satellite system, right? Our communication system. Um, so the other two things we really need to take a look at are Mars Cycler Test and Mars Station 1. And I'm a little bit more worried about those than I was with this. But, uh, you know, so far we have reason to hope. So anyway, I'll come back to you once all this is updated. Okay, so it looks like we have 37 days of food remaining, so we'll have to pay attention to this soon. On the bright side, we'll get to move this supply vehicle off so it doesn't look horrible, and then we'll just have the station. Uh, we could probably fit all of the food, water, and oxygen in the station's own tanks, but I'll take care of that later on, not right now. Okay, so that's good. Next, we need to take a look at the two Mars missions that have crew on board. The Mars Cycler and the Mars Station. The Mars Station has Jeb. Uh, so, oh boy. Here we go. Mars Cycler first.
Okay, well... Okay, so that's what happened to the Mars Cycler. I I'm not entirely surprised because this sort of thing has been happening when I tried to upgrade 1.0.5 stuff. And it looks like... Okay, structural failure on linkage between early controllable core and NASA docking system. Uh, it seems... Well, it basically seems like a whole lot of structural failures. Um, and G-force... See, G-force tolerance there. Um... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to think about that, but it would seem like three of our Kerbals will perish if we if we go with this. Uh, we could try jumping jumping from the tracking station to it. But anyway, uh, okay. L well, let's see. Let me go back to space center to the tracking station. And we'll jump to Jeb that way. Somehow there's still a Mars Cycler test with three crew and four hours worth of food, three days of oxygen, I mean three days of water and three days of oxygen. Um, okay, let me just see about that. Uh, let's see. Look at all these missions, really. Okay, so Mars Cycler test... Well, there's a lot of a lot of pieces of it now. I think that's the main one. Okay, well, this was a little dragon capsule. No, this is not where they are. So which part are they in? Our Kerbals. It's gotta be other parts nearby. No, it doesn't say so. Hmm. So this is uh one of the problems that I've been having with uh the environmental visual enhancements in 1.1.2 with real solar system. Uh, it's I think it's supposed to be nighttime, judging by the darkness of the sky. But obviously the ground is not colored right. That might be planet shine. Do I have planet shine in here? Anyway, let me not deal with that right now. Let's try and find those kerbals. Okay, so here's the habitat. I think I see a problem here. The greenhouse, well, those just don't have their proper textures. The greenhouse and the algae farm. I can probably fix that. There is some fuel here, uh, but all, I think the only ones that can actually use the fuel is the RCS thrusters. I don't think it can bring this back home to Earth. Uh, but Miko uh, Gonzalez, another Gonzalez, we have a Gonzalez clone, and the pixeled fox all seem to actually be alive still after the explosion. So that's good. I mean, I can envision a plan where we don't turn to them until they hit Mars. They're probably already on a Mars encounter before, you know, the explosion. And then when they reach Mars, we turn to them. They The vessel explodes, they're still alive. And we can send another vessel to them or something like that. I don't know. It's possible. I mean, it's possible. So we'll have to think about that. But right now, if we just leave them be, there's no way we can send a, any sort of effort to rescue them in the five days they have left on the water. But definitely not, you know, the oxygen four days and the food is the worst. Then again, as far as the food's concerned, they're making their own food. They're cultivating and uh, they have this greenhouse going on. So, yeah, they should be able to make their own food. I don't know if that's working properly or not, though. It depends on the plugin that comes with uh, Planetary Base Inc. and whether that's actually working, I don't know. Uh, this is missing ore, but that's fine. It's actually the greenhouse that has to work. It's got two greenhouse modules for some reason. It doesn't show that it's producing food up there. Okay, so much to think about as far as that's concerned. Let's see about Jeb, who's probably in in dire straits as well, knowing Jeb. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know what to think about this. Uh, clearly, it, it seems like maybe some node has changed. Uh, this controller, I don't know. No, the docking port's definitely on top of the controller, and the controller's definitely on top of the cupola. Jeb should be in the cupola. 
but I can't really access it right now. Um, ship manifest. Ship manifest sees Jeb Kerman in there, but we don't have a portrait down here. Not too sure what's going on here. Now, uh, the body looks fine, but there's definitely supposed to be a tank here, an SSTU tank that isn't appearing, and obviously an engine of some kind, and those aren't showing up. Um, just as a test, oh, I, I really can't click on any of these things as they're blinking in and out. It's sort of a ghost ship. I don't know if there's something... This this remote guidance unit, I can... Let me, let me just call it Mars Station 1 without the... I don't know if that makes any difference at all. Nope. But that's the only part I can click on. And I wouldn't be able to get Jeb out, and I don't think. I could probably move him using the ship manifest. I can move him from one part to another, maybe. Not a big fan of that sound, frankly. But it works. Oh, now he shows up, too. He doesn't show up when he's in the cupola, but he shows up when he's in the hitchhiker can. Okay, he's got plenty of food, water, and oxygen, but uh, there's a lot of raster... These are raster prop monitor issues. Check configuration. So maybe this is a raster prop monitor thing, but that doesn't explain what's happening with the tank and why that's totally disappeared. Okay, so uh, file that under question mark, but Jeb is still alive. Um, does he have Delta V to work with? It does not look like it. Let's see. Yeah, no, no apparent Delta V. So the fact that the tank is sort of disappeared means that uh, Jeb is probably in trouble. Let's see. Plenty of food, but otherwise in trouble. It's not really highlighting our path, is it? No. There's some sort of texture issue with the paths. And also, clicking on Mars does not seem to give me the dialogue that says, hey, we can target it. There's also no connection here, which is odd since Jeb's there. See? So, lots of question marks there. Let me leave that be for now. Let me go... Uh, I think we've checked every vehicle that has Kerbals in. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the tracking station. Let's check on our probes. Okay. Actually, it would appear to be the case that it doesn't want us to go to Space Center like this. Hmm. Target switching locked. Does that mean if I try to switch from here, it won't work either? Yeah. Well, obviously, I can't click on anything on the map. And they're sort of disappearing too, which doesn't make me feel any better. They're, they're here now, but yeah. And I suppose curb alarm clock, if I wanted to jump to any of these. Oh, I can jump to ship like this, maybe. Uh, Alright, well, well, we'll take that. Nope, that doesn't work either. And Mars supply container, jump to ship, nope. Okay, so that's a pretty serious bug Jeb has. Alright, I guess I'll have to restart the game in order to get to anywhere. Now you might be wondering, well, two of our vehicles already have issues and those are vehicles with Kerbals in, uh, so why even continue checking on other things? And the point is that we are currently at the Kerbin to Mars transfer window, and so we could potentially relaunch those missions and uh, still hit the window, still uh, send them to Mars, because the two missions that we have problems with are Mars missions. So we could relaunch them. The problem is the fact that we might lose our Kerbals. However, it seems like the Kerbals that I recruited among my Twitch uh, viewers, which are on the Cycler, they seem to be able to clone themselves a bit. Uh, we have more than one Griffin, and I think we have uh, more than one Gonzalez and uh, other, other instances of Kerbal cloning going on. So there is that. The problem is Jeb, mainly. So that's a big question mark. But let's check on our Mars Ascent vehicle, which is another Mars mission. And then another Mars mission that we need to look at is the rover, the Burroughs rover. But let's take a look at the Ascent vehicle. 
Okay, it looks like the Ascent vehicle has the same sort of issue that Jeb's craft had. Um, there were no Kerbals on board this one. Um, it seems to be a, a SSTU issue, because uh, this part isn't supposed to be here. Not like that. There seems to be a node issue is what's going on. You can see that the engine is over here. And then we have a tank here. The engine definitely should be higher up. I think what's happened is that the mount for the engine has reset. But then we also have the invisible tank issue going on here. So very complicated sort of situation. But there were no Kerbals in this one. Um, another problem seems to be that we're missing the docking port on top. There was a docking port. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can find it inside. Now, the, the Alcor pod, which is what this is, didn't actually say it was compatible with 1.1.2, but actually it seems to be the only part that's doing quite well right now, so... Okay, well, uh, so this is a problem. Yeah, so I'll, I'll rule this craft also buggy and uh, not usable. Also, there's no connection, because I think the antennae are on the parts that are disappearing. So, yeah. Yep. Issues here. Alright, let's take a look at the rover. Now, interestingly, we weren't able to jump away from Jeb's craft, but it looks like we can go back to the Space Center after looking at the MAV. But we weren't able to switch directly to the Burroughs rover from the map. So, uh, the bugs are interesting. Now, uh, we should check out the debug log. Let's see what it said about all that. Uh-huh, uh no, no reference exception. Yeah, so there was an ob there's obviously some no reference exception going on here. <laughs> oh, why am I not surprised? Uh, so yeah, uh, some change in some mod has led to uh, a command or a link in the mod that now no longer exists in 1.1.2. It used to exist in 1.0.5, but doesn't exist now. So that's our problem. In theory, if we do not, if we do not visit those mods, uh, if, if those crafts, or if we get rid of them in the save, it should be all right, maybe. All right, let's take a look at the Burroughs rover, which is the last of our new Mars missions. I think actually we have a Mars supply mission as well. Uh oh. Okay. Um, it looks like uh, the Mars, uh, okay, the Mars rover, the Burroughs rover, uh, had the same problem as the Cycler. Though I think it's uh, well and truly done for. I don't think there's a uh, rover floating around here somewhere. Orbit, Nan. Yeah, let's go back to Space Center before we have any further problems. Okay, so all of our new Mars missions are messed up somehow, but that leaves the possibility that I can use the save from before I launch those missions and then the Kerbals would be safe as well. So I could relaunch those missions from a time before I launch those missions because I always zip up the saves after each, uh, after each stream. So that's a possibility. Now we've got Jupiter Probe Alpha that we put orbiting Callisto. Let's check up on that and then we'll go through all of our interplanetary probes to see how they're doing. And again, the goal here, the reason why I'm interested in getting in 1.1 is just performance, right? Because uh, we can launch things quicker, things look better, um, frame rates. And of course, the mods will be updated as well. Okay, well, we have a probe. What we don't seem to have is a connection to the probe. No connection, it says there. Very little Arizona N204 to... Let's turn that off. Let's see. Let me just time warp a little bit to see if we regain connection at some point. It would not appear so. It's Jupiter. There doesn't seem to be a line. Well, let's show our connections. 
Europa Pro Ban. Well, Europa Pro has a connection back, but this doesn't. I think the antenna has been modified by Realism Overhaul. Well, it says dish range quite a lot. Uh, no, that's 4 million kilometers. That's not enough. 4 million kilometers is not enough. So I think what's going on is we need to make sure that the range of the dishes matches between this version and the previous version. Oops, sorry. Zooming out on the wrong thing. Yeah, so I'll need to adjust the range of the dishes to make sure that that's all right. Otherwise, we'll lose connect, uh, communication with everything. But let's take a look at our active missions. I didn't check on the Mars supply container. I feel like this is going to explode. Nope, uh, I just flipped. Uh, okay, no, uh, stop. Okay, this Mars supply container seems alright, except its engine mount once again resides. I think I probably didn't even have a mount on this. this the engine was probably directly attached, and I probably set to no mount. But it seems to be alright. It's still on its way out from the curb, curb, Curbin system, which is actually the, uh, the Earth system. And it's got its Mars encounter. So it's actually alright. Our only Mars mission that uh, seems to be in a good situation. Okay, uh, let's take a look at our Europa probe. So this is what the Europa probe looks like. And once again, it's got the mount when it's not supposed to have the mount. The engines were directly connected to this. Uh, but that's because SSTU Labs uh, had an update that reset things. Also, I should point out that even though they're Vinci engines, they say RL1060, which is a comparable engine anyway. It's properly reading the delta V, and uh, we've got the liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. Actually, I think uh, we probably should have boil off on that, but I'm not entirely sure how boil off works in realism overhaul now in 1.1.2. Uh, otherwise, we clearly have aerosene there, and uh, we should have a lock. Yes, we have a lock tank of aerosene there. Oh, uh, we've been using this aerosene to maneuver. That's not very convenient. We've been using a lot of RCS here. Okay, we'll have to watch out for that. Otherwise, we won't be able to get to our target, in in orbit around our target, right? Europa, we need all of our fuel in order to get into orbit around Europa. And taking a look at the map, are we still on track? No, I want to take a look at Jupiter. Focus view. Yeah, we're, uh, we're sort of touching the orbit of Europa, and so we are on track for a Europa approach. Very good. Alright, so Europa probe did not explode on us. How about the Rock Candy Mountain probe? Alright, I've made a note to myself to fix antenna ranges, but that's not a problem with this one. This one seems connected. It's got a nice big dish there. Yeah, I think it's the ranges in the AIES pack that I need to fix. Okay, this one also did not explode. It's got a little bit of fuel left here and uh, much more here. Where is it headed to? It's got a mid-course adjustment and then it will be headed into the Jupiter system. I'm not entirely clear what we'll end up hitting, but uh, we first need to make the correction. Oh, I know, I know. The Big Rock Candy Mountain Probe is doing a slingshot by Jupiter in order to head to Saturn. See, now we have a Saturn encounter there. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to be slingshotting around Jupiter. This is a minor, well, 370 meters per second adjustment in order to hit Saturn, right. So that's the big rock candy mountain probe. And we will be heading to Saturn with that. Okay, and it seems to be ready to go. It doesn't seem to have any obvious problems. All right. All connected to, okay. So next, Burroughs rover we know got destroyed, uh, Mars Station 1 sort of the same way. Jupiter Probe Gamma, I think that one lost connection, let's take a look at it. Jupiter Probe Gamma has no connection, and it has electric charge, it's just this dish which I thought would have connection. Oh, uh, it doesn't have the target listed. Uh, let me make a note to myself. 
I think that was because of changing versions. I think I just need to, let me just make a note, Jupiter Probe Gamma. I can just manually tell it what the target is. Uh, reset target. Okay, this is our little Titan lander. RTG is arrayed like that. Com dish seems to be connected. It's got plenty of range. For now. I mean, hopefully it'll maintain its range. I don't know, that says 22 million kilometers. That doesn't seem like it's enough, is it? Right? I mean, it's uh, 22 gigameters, which is 22 million kilometers. But anyway, it's definitely headed towards Saturn. It's on its expected trajectory. And it says it's connected, so that's nice. Yep, and power. Power looks good. Delta V is present. And that tank is locked, so we have actually much more Delta V than it's reading there. Okay, that is good. So that's on its way to Titan. And Better Tomorrows is another Saturn probe. This probe is also connected. It needs to do an adjustment. Its dish is definitely okay. It has a range of 8 billion kilometers, which is more like it. And that tank is locked. It has hydrazine. This was created by Tomasino. So this is his probe. And everything else looks good. Nothing exploding. And it's got science instruments as well. Okay. Next our Pluto probe, which is just a flyby mission now. Okay, Pinky the Pluto probe is looking intact. No problems. Not enough Delta V to get into orbit around Pluto. It might. I think I've got it plotted for one more adjustment in an attempt to get closer to Pluto. Hoping that we will eventually get an uh, encounter that will allow us to to, you know, pass close enough to get some nice pictures at least. So, but I haven't actually plotted that out. You can see it's zero meters per second because I just had a temporary maneuver there. But, yeah, it looks fine. Entirely pink still. Okay, finally the Uranus satellite. And the Uranus satellite also looks intact. No problems. Yep, no obvious issues. Delta V is still intact, 6,000 meters per second. And so actually this should easily get into orbit around Uranus. Then again, it'll be going a little bit fast because it's got this sort of uh, trajectory where it goes past Uranus and then comes back in. But we've got actually the orbital burn plotted, I think. Let's see. Oh, for some reason I can't click on... Oh, oh wait, it was just having some lag. Was it? I don't know. It's not letting me click on Uranus. It lets me click on Saturn. How strange. Okay, but I see a burn there. So I assume that's a burn to get into orbit, but some bugginess with the trajectories. Yeah, it's definitely not letting me click on that. Saturn's fine, Jupiter is fine, Neptune is fine, Pluto's fine. Actually, for some reason, it says Pluto unset target. Let me unset target from Pluto. The only one I wanted, I can't really select. So that's curious. But okay, anyway, at least the probe is, it seems to be on its way properly with a maneuver there that's probably to get into orbit. Alright, so this is the situation we have. Uh, it's possible that I can uh, go back to a save where we hadn't launched the Mars missions that obviously have trouble. Why it is that the Mars missions that I recently launched are the only ones that seem to have problems, I don't know. It might have something to do with the SSTU parts or some other update to some mod that uh, caused this whole thing to go awry. Something like that. Uh, but uh, I can go back to a save before we launch those and then try and launch those again. Because everything else seems to be alright. Everything else, well I mean, 
who knows what kind of bugs I have. But actually, jumping from one probe to another, uh, through all these probes that we've seen, um, it's actually worked without crashing. So that's sort of nice. We are currently at 6.6 .6 gigabytes of RAM. The peak I've seen is about 7.4. That's mostly when... Now, I've been jumping around using Kerbal Alarm Clock instead of going to the tracking station. If you go back to the tracking station, it, uh, the RAM usage jumps a little bit. Yeah, so now we're at 6.75 gigabytes of RAM. So it jumped by about 100. So that's the situation here. I'll continue to work on it. I don't know how it's going to be. I still got to fix environmental visual enhancements. Let's see... Do we eventually get nice skies? No, there's definitely something wrong going on there. So for those who wondered how I got clouds in in uh, in this version of RSS, well, you know, uh, I've, I've still got some kinks to work out as far as that's concerned. So I'll I'll listen to your suggestions about what I should do with uh, solar system colonization going on. But I think if we stick to 1.0.5. Uh, that's just going to frustrate people because everybody's going to want to see it in 1.1, which will make it faster, better frame rates, and make the launches smoother. So with those thoughts, I'll leave you, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.